Hey guys, Robbie Raz here with you from Cigar Federation here at IPCPR 2015 in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm here with Steve Saka. We're going to talk about the new Sombra Mesa. We're going to have uh, a few uh, sips of some drinks here and uh, <laughs> and just and welcome Steve back into the industry. We're real, everybody's happy to have you back. It's great to see you here. Well, not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody that we're talking to. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's every, oh, no, I'm telling you, that's, since... Since this has been announced, it's one of the biggest topics that of conversation on our site. So. It kind of blows me away because I mean, I, I mean, we only announced it like what 20 days ago or some nonsense. Yeah. So it, it's been pretty incredible. I actually, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed by it to be honest with you. I mean, look, I'm not a total douchebag. I knew that people were gonna sure. have interest, but I didn't expect the expectation level to be so high. And also, it's a it's a little bit unnerving because you know. You know, when we, when we first did Liga, nobody had any expectation. You know, I remember when we tried to offer it to 50 accounts, 20 of the 50 turned us down. It was like, who's going to want a cigar, traditional cigar made by Drew? And uh, so that was much different. Nobody had any expectation. So when they first tasted it, they're like, wow, they were surprised. This time it's the opposite end around. Everybody's expecting incredible. And I, I don't know if it's possible to live up to that expectation. So... Uh, all I can do is the best I can do. Make something I love, you know, put as much uh, effort into it as possible, try to do the best, and hopefully I'll satisfy some people. But you, you know what I say, Robbie, I mean, you, you can't make a cigar that everybody likes because when you do that, you're ultimately making a cigar that nobody loves. And so uh, it's just pretty much, uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I know we're all real excited to hear about it. Tell us a little bit about, you know, the blend. Um, and you know, the type of profile we can expect. Because you're, you're smoking right now. I haven't smoked it yet. Looking forward to it. But uh, well, tell, tell us a little bit about it. Let me tell you why. And this is a little bit of an issue. Uh, I mean, the actual production started four weeks ago. And wow. the cigars, they're just too wet. Yeah. You know, rainy season started. And some of them, you know, they're smoking really, really well. And other ones, uh, it's like, you look at this one. It's good, but the burn isn't really perfect, perfect yet. And it will be perfect, perfect. But it needs like another four to six weeks to wick out the moisture. And uh, so for me, I want people, I want them to try it when it's exactly the way I want it to be. So when they decide whether they like it or they don't like it, they're deciding based on how it's supposed to smoke. Not because I'm trying to rush a sample to the trade show floor because this is the trade show. Because to me, um, and I can understand if a retailer doesn't want to carry it until they ta sample it, I don't blame them, I wouldn't either. And I'll be happy to send them samples, but I just want to make sure when people try it, they're experiencing it the way I intended it for it to be experienced. So I'm just kind of taking that approach to it. Now the blend itself, you know, it's uh, I'm getting it crafted over with my friends at Hoyt in Nicaragua, and I, I love those guys. They are, they're some of the best, best people. As much as I love them, they're incredibly good at making Nicaraguan puros. I mean. They've been working with the same varieties of black tobacco for four and a half decades. At the same time, that also means that a lot of times what they make in the factory has a lot of very similar taste profiles. And for me, as much as I love that Antonio profile, I, I wanted them to make something different. And in order for that to happen, I had to, as part of the deal, was the agreement that they let me purchase my own materials or if I didn't purchase it directly, that I would select it and that they would purchase it and we would bring in all new tobaccos that they don't typically work with. And you know, and it wasn't just for my benefit, but also for theirs because I think they're incredibly capable and competent cigar makers and I really think they could broaden their horizons and you know, offer consumers a, a different tasting experience. So of the seven tobaccos used, um, even though there's some similar varieties in the list that they do inventory, Really, only one of the tobaccos is one that they were currently originally pulling from their inventories, uh, and it's the ASP Lajero, which is a very common tobacco. A lot of manufacturers use that because it's a very uh, kind of a really peppery, zippy kind of tobacco. Um, and the wrapper's an Ecuador Habano, and they work with Ecuador Habano, but I wanted a particular grade one, dark rosado, and I wanted it from a particular farm. I wanted it from the Lameca farm, which is uh, the Oliva's premier farm. It's the one that uh, it's actually named after John Oliva Sr.'s mom. Um, you know, with the, and underneath that Ecuador Habano, I wanted to use a San Andreas Negro wrapper, but there's a particular farm in uh, Mexico, very small farm, 
um, and it's uh, Vegas de Perros. It's the farm of the dogs. And I'm like, Carlos, why, why'd you name your farm the farm of the dogs? Oh, well, we got a lot of stray dogs. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm not so sure it's a selling point. Yeah. But what they do is they grow their tobacco late. Now, they, they, they twist it as a, as a good thing. What they do is they grow it late in the season and they don't irrigate it. So it gets irrigated in the rain, okay. in the rainy season. And they call it, they call it, uh, they call it de temporal, which means in the storm. And I don't know what it is about their, their San Andreas. It just has an incredibly sweetness to it, hmm. much more than most of the other Mexicans that I've tasted in the past. And I really became entranced with that tobacco. And for me, when you pair it with an Ecuador Habano, because an Ecuador Habano, Ecuador Habano is one of those wrappers that for the most part, the binder is a lot more critical. It's not where the binder is just a matter of girdling the, the bunch. It's also really genuinely a flavor component in the cigar. And so for me, it was really important to select a binder that added something to the cigar and not just serve the functionality of combustion and girdling. So that de temporal tobacco just gives me a real nice lingering sweetness that I really appreciate. The Tripa, it's five fillers. Um, the five fillers are primarily Nicaraguan. Um, the Seco, the Base leaf, it comes from Condega. It's a seed that's grown by Santiago. It's, uh, it's got a little bit more body than your typical Condega leaf. You know, most Condega leaves, you know, you always say, oh, you got Jalapa, you got Esteli. Jalapa is the sweeter, more mild. Esteli is the more spicy, kind of drier profile. Condega somewhere in the middle. This Condega actually has some body, even though it's a Seco. It's a, it's a really nice leaf, and it adds a certain creaminess to the blend that I really, really like. I got two Visos. The one Viso comes from Fuego Nueva. Um, I don't think there's a lot of people using the Pueblo in a way of a tobacco yet. I think a lot of people will in the future. It's a little bit problematic because you don't really have a lot of commercial agriculture out in Pueblo Nuevo. Now, Pueblo Nuevo, location-wise, is basically due west of roughly Condega. But the issue is it isn't like a typical tobacco valley where you have large plots of manzanas to grow. What you have is you have a lot of very small independent farmers a manzana here, a half a manzana there, three manzanas there. So you have to not only go and buy those tobaccos individually from those farmers, but you also have to be incredibly selective to try to get a crop that's very similar. Because you are really, you really are having to collaborate the tobaccos that you purchase. Um, but the soil out in Pueblo Noyo, even though it's really fertile, it has almost a little bit more of a an SLE quality to it and the grittiness and the sandiness and it produces a, a nice heavy leaf. The second viso is uh, from La Jolla, which has nothing to do with Hoya de Nicaragua. It's actually the name of Oliva Tobacco Company's farm there in Esteli. It's their premier filler crop farm and they're growing a C98 seed there. And you know, I don't, the seed is very good, but I don't know that it's really the seed that makes this particular tobacco special. I think it's more in the way they ferment it. They're doing this very unique technique where instead of building the polones in your typical 50 leaf sure. gavilla, sure. what they're doing is they're actually taking the tobacco and they're stringing it flat, la plancha. Hmm. So what you have is you have leaf, 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 spread in like a wide sheet. And then what they do is when they take that leaf and they put it on the polone, they swing it in the air and it kind of floats down like a bed sheet onto the polone. So that leaf, has got 100% contact on the bottom of it, 100% contact on the top of it. And what ends up happening is it lets them ferment it fully, but at a much lower temperature. So the tobacco just has a really, really nice taste to it. And it's incredibly even in the fermentation without you having to push it further. Because when you have those leaves encapsulated in the center of the gavilla, you sometimes have to push the heat a little higher to get the ones in the middle of that 50 count pad, where in this case, you don't have to do that. So it has a really, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm using it this year. When I brought that tobacco my friends at Hoya, they loved it so much, they instantly bought another 100 bales. I mean, it's, I guarantee you, next year, year after, you're going to hear everybody's going to tell you about this amazing sheep pullone La Jolla tobacco, because you're going to hear it. It's going to become the popular thing, because it's really, it's a great, great tobacco. Got two Lajeros. The first Lajero, 
is a Lajero that's very popular with Nicaraguan cigar makers. It's the ASP Lajero. It's that bushy, hybrid, kind of short, squat little plant. It's primarily known to be just super spicy, super peppery. It's something that adds that zip to it. I like the tobacco. However, it can be a little overwhelming for me. So I kind of like to use it sparingly. You know what I mean? Because I'm, uh, I like strong cigars. You know, I smoke six, seven, eight, 22 a day, something like that. <laughs> but at the same time, because I smoke so many, I don't typically like that punch in the face. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I need it to be strong enough to be satisfying, but I don't want it to be overwhelming. So for me, I, I take that ASP Lajero and I use it in a way that it gives me the kick that I want, but then I'm also pairing it with a Pennsylvania Maduro. And I think you will have noticed even in this year's show, there's quite a few people that are starting to use that, that broadleaf coming out of Pennsylvania. Because you get a lot of body, a lot of strength of tobacco, but you get it in a very rounded way. You know what I mean? So it's less peppery, but yet you're still getting the strength element out of it, but without feeling the punishment from it. So I mean, overall, I think the blend's about a, if I had to put it on a 10 point scale on a strength area, about a seven. Body wise, it's like all the cigars I like. I like cigars that fill your mouth, you got a real lushness on the palate. So it's that typical heavy, full body kind of experience in that mechanism. Um, flavor wise, how would I describe the flavor? Fucking great, that's the flavor. <laughs> no, honestly, uh, the flavor, if I had to, how would I break it down? It's a lot, it's, it's a complex blend. So there's like notes of cedar, there's like notes of like cafe in it. There's kind of that, um, you know like the dry powdered cocoa, yeah. but not the cheap Hershey shit, that yeah. fancy Dutch press stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's got like some of that going on. And the other thing too, that I really like about this cigar. It's a really nice, sweet, tele cherry pepper on the retrohale. Now, obviously, for a lot of guys that don't retrohale, they're not going to get to enjoy that. But I think for the guys that are like really super into this, mm -hmm. I think they're going to just they're going to go crazy for it because it gives you the right amount of spice without hurting you. So it's really it's a really pleasurable cigar to retrohale, and uh, and then from that uh, from that dog tobacco, it's got, it's got <laughs> this really nice lingering sweetness in your mouth. So. I, of course, I think it's great. Everybody thinks the cigar they make is great. But ultimately, you know, I'm hoping people will try it, see what they think of it. And, you know, if they don't like it, don't buy it. And, but, you know, give me a shot next time. I'm making other blends, too. And hopefully I'll come up with one that they, uh, they find suits their palate. I love listening to you talk about tobacco, man. Every time I get to sit down and chat with you, I feel like I learned something. And you just dropped like seven or eight pearls of knowledge on me. I'm going to have to go back and watch this again, try to absorb all of it. But uh, the, the blend sounds fantastic. The experience sounds fantastic. Um, I can, like you were saying, the expectation is so high. It's crazy high, man. But, but the, way that, the way that you talk about it and the way that you break it down, I think that's the kind of thing that, that I know our listeners is probably going to be one of our highest viewed videos. That's the stuff that they want to hear. You know, in, at my core, I'm a cigar geek. I've been a cigar geek since the early 90s. I love cigars, I love tobacco. At the same time, I'm a capitalist too. I wanna to make money, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. So I mean, I always look at things in respect to business, but I've always been a believer in, if you do something right, you'll be rewarded. If you say to yourself, well, you know what? This cigar needs to cost six to eight dollars because that's where you're gonna sell the most cigars. And then you try to figure out how to make a six to eight dollar cigar you're not really making the best cigar. So like for this, I honestly did not know what the price of this cigar was until last Friday. Oh, wow. I was in Nicaragua uh -huh. looking at the first month's production, doing the yield and the index numbers, sitting down with my friends at Hoya, trying to figure it out. I finally get the numbers and it's very simple. I look at what it costs to make, I add a, a set profit margin on top of it and that's what the price becomes. I don't, I don't take it from the perspective of, well I wanna make something this way. Yeah. I just try to make the very best thing I can make and then I try to say okay if I make this how much do I have to charge in order for it to continue making it that way. 
And then ultimately what will happen is the consumer will decide whether it's worthy or not worthy. And if they decide it isn't worthy, I can understand that, but I'm not going to try to fit it into a box sure. that just to try to hit a market segment. What it will mean is it will mean I didn't do a good job, I didn't make something that they thought was worthy, and I'll try to make something else that they find more worthy. But, I mean, I find a lot of these guys, they, they kind of overthink. Because in the end, I mean, I'm really proud of the packaging. I'm really proud of the brand, you know, but ultimately it always comes back to the cigar. You know, you're asking a guy to open his wallet. You're asking him to, it's not a little bit of money. And it's not even just the money. You're asking him to spend an hour and a half with you. I mean, and time is more precious than anything else. So you want to give him a really nice hour, hour and a half experience. He can enjoy himself. So for me, that's, you know, that's really what it's about. And, you know, ultimately, all I can do is my very best and, and hope. That's all I can do. <laughs> well, we're all really excited about it. I know I'm looking forward to smoking it. I know you guys are looking forward to smoking it as well. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some reviews posted up for you guys in the near future. Um, Steve, thanks so much for taking the time, man. My really pleasure, appreciate Robbie. it. Thank all you so time, much. Man. Guys, thanks for checking out our IPCPR coverage on CigarFederation.com.